And I remember during that particular year in 1988, when the Iraqi people were just so desperate and helpless after eight years of war with Iran, people were saying like, this would never be over. This would never end. And I'm not saying every time you fast you will see a miracle, like physically you would see it. You will experience miracle, yes, interiorly, because every time you fast, we grow closer to God if we are doing it interiorly. I remember that particular year, just before we broke the fasting on our third day, I was in the church and finishing my, the last 50 Psalms was our third day of fasting. I remember on that day, I knelt and prayed so hard for my people and for the people of Iran, because we lost people from both sides. Both countries suffered. Both nations <coughs> suffered. And I remember after kneeling for a while, we don't have blessed sacrament in the Assyrian church. I just knelt before the altar. After kneeling for a while and after I finished all my 150 psalms on the third day, I heard a voice. The Lord was directing me to a tree. But there was no tree, like literally a tree. And he said, no, I want you to go. And there are nine fruits on that tree. And I want, them to, I want you to go and pick them and give hand, half of them to the Iraqi people and half of them to the Iranian people. And I looked around, there was no tree. And the, but I kept hearing the voice saying, go and look at that tree and you will see the nine fruit. I went outside looking everywhere and finally I saw one small tree it has a sign, Galatians 22, 522. Some of you probably are familiar with that. There were nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. And the first one I picked was peace. As if I woke up and there was no tree, I went home and I told everyone, the war will end. And a week later, the war ended. Again, I'm not saying that every time we fast. I fasted all years of my life as a child and as a teenager, as an adult. But God is faithful to those who approach him faithfully. I prayed with supplication. I'm sure a lot of you have had moments when you pray in a way that you never prayed before. Prayer of supplication. Prayer of crying out to God. Seeking help. Begging Him for a grace. Because I gave Him everything that my tradition, my upbringing, my church, my parents, my pastor, I was taught about fasting and giving everything to God and trusting that he would be there with you. I believed in that sign. Even though I, I don't know if that tree was, was really there or not, but this is what I felt in my prayer, and this is what I experienced. There have been many moments in my life, again, because of fasting, because of asking the Lord to be the center of my life. Very often my daughters ask me, they say, Mother, like how you live with very little food? I don't think about it. People sometimes are surprised, they say, what do you mean you don't remember to eat? Don't you get hangry? I do get hangry, it's not that I don't have a stomach like other people. But my point is, again, when I fast, I really ask him for that grace to enter with him into the desert. As we all know from the passage of Jesus being tempted in the desert, was led by the Spirit. You know, when I think of that passage, very often, those of you who have been on retreat, I know I've seen it with, with our BU kids, like when you experience something powerful, you cannot even express it, you just wanna be alone, you feel just so overwhelmed. I, I cannot even fathom this. So I feel this is what happened to Jesus. After his baptism, 
the Holy Spirit came upon him, and he heard the voice of the Father saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And as if he needed that solitude in the desert, because it was such a powerful experience. <coughs> but as we also know, whenever we experience something very powerful, the evil one, as I said earlier, is not pleased with that. So he came after Jesus to tempt him into the desert, in the desert. So every time when I fast, I want to enter into that experience with him. I know it's not easy, just like Jesus when he was fasting in the desert. There will be temptations. There will be questions, why you are doing this? What is the point? Why just bread and water? You can fast other ways. I'm sure you have heard this before. There will be questions, there will be temptations. But if you know with whom you are entering, as you enter into this journey of fasting and prayer, and who you are imitating, and what you are trying to be and to do, you would see tremendous fruit from your journey of praying and fasting. It's a beautiful way that you are you know, preparing during this retreat for your Advent. In a week, we will enter the holy season of preparation to celebrate the incarnation of our Lord. What a better way, I'm sure you've seen it with people who, you know, love each other so much, whether parents and children or spouses, you just want to please your loved ones. You just want to do what makes them happy. I've seen it especially children with their parents. They just want to do what makes their parents happy. And as children of God, we all are children of God. What a better way to please Him than to try to imitate His only begotten Son as we prepare to enter into the Advent season. Again, God has given each one of us a different path, a different vocation, a different way of living out our vocation. I'm not recommending everyone to fast like the Assyrian people. That is their tradition. And we have our tradition. We have the teaching of our church. And also each person, you know your health, you know your limits. But do not be afraid to ask the Lord for that grace to teach you how to enter into desert with him every time when you are fasting or when you choose to fast. My life of entering into desert with Jesus it's almost like when I'm around children, like the beautiful children that we have here, you always almost get to know their parents before even meeting them because of the way they were brought up. You know, for me, my experience at BU with my BU kids, I felt like by just being around them for four years, I, I almost imagined how is their home you know, how they were brought up, and their parents, and their siblings, and their relationships, by just watching them. When I am around, especially um, Angela and David Franks' kids, I can immediately see their upbringing by the way that I watch the children. You will get to know their upbringing by just watching them and seeing them. And I feel the same for me, the more I got closer to Jesus, through life of prayer and fasting, the more I got to know his parents. I feel it's like two ways road. In so many ways, I always go to Jesus to keep me closer to Joseph and Mary, but in so many ways also always I found Joseph and Mary leading me to Jesus. But it was really my journey of prayer and fasting and entering into desert for many, many years of my life, as I told you, that was the tradition of our church, my church, growing up. I got to know Jesus, and through him, I got to know Mary of Nazareth and Joseph of Nazareth. 